Welcome. Thank you very much. Now, all right, so how does a kid from Northern Ireland learn about Notre Dame? Yeah, so um, I was actually part of a program called the Sutton Trust, um, which is a UK-wide program that helps kids from low- and middle-income families apply to the U.S. Um, so there were two kids from my school who had uh, previously gone to the U.S., uh, one at Yale, one at Claremont McKenna, and I wanted to follow in their footsteps, um, and they pointed me in the direction of Notre Dame, being Irish, thought it would be a good fit for me. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> And did you know right away you wanted to come to Notre Dame? Did, have you visited Notre Dame? Yeah, so um, I visited other schools as well, and you know I visited a certain school, and I said, oh, I'm 99% sure, I'm, sure I'm, I'm going to end up there. And then I visited Notre Dame, and that idea was scratched straight away. Um, as soon as I came onto this campus, I knew that's where I wanted to be, um, and it's an absolute dream being here. So I came out for Hesburgh International Scholars Experience Week, which was an incredible week, um, and I fell in love with this place. Now, I understand you have fully embraced the Notre Dame experience. Yeah, I mean, I've been so lucky with the opportunities that I've had. Um, so everything from my academics, so I'm studying political science and peace studies, some of the best professors in the world that I'm working with, um, to everything Model UN last year, I tutored at the Robinson Community Center. Um, and one of the big things for me as well um, is tour guiding. Um, I give a tour today as well. Um, but getting to meet so many interesting individuals, um, sometimes they can't understand me because of the accent. It's always a shock. Um, <laughs> but another huge component um, is residential life as well, and that's mm -hmm. something I'm really passionate about. Um, and I think that's such a unique thing about Notre Dame is that we have dorms which are everything to us, um, whether that's interhall sport um, or other competitions. Um, and I think this really came through. So I'm in St. Edward's Hall, so a lot of you may know Father Ralph. Um, a lot of respect for him. Yeah. We see a <laughs> big supporter here. Um, but around this time last year, my father passed away after a seven-year battle um, with Alzheimer's. Um, and when that happened last year, um, my dorm really was a, a strength for me and a rock a foundation. Um, and that experience for me, it was a tough time, but without the support of my dorm, I don't think I would have made it through, so. Yeah, and you were so far from home, and this became your home. Yeah, and I just want to thank the Student Enrichment Fund here. It was absolutely incredible, because they were the ones who were able to provide travel home for me for that, um, and I'm so grateful for that experience. But this is home. I know it's cliche, home under the dome, but this place is really in my blood, and any time I talk about it or the alma mater comes on, I get goosebumps. Um, and it's true, and no matter how many photos I take or how many videos I take, the Golden Dome is always going to be shining, um, and people back home will still not just quite get it. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, you are a Hesburgh USCO Scholar. There are only 25 of those mm -hmm. on campus. That is a, a great honor to have. And, Tell us about the experience, because it also came with the opportunity to take a trip recently. Yeah, so um, Hesburgh Yusko is a great program. Very thankful to Mark Yusko and Stacey Yusko, who aren't here tonight, um, but for the opportunity to enrich my Notre Dame experience um, through pillars such as leadership, service, um, moral force of character. Um, so this past summer, I actually went to Cape Town, South Africa, so Mr. Affleck Graves, I was in your, your home country, beautiful place. Um, but I actually got to uh, live in one of the townships there. I got to coach soccer for eight weeks uh, and mentor the kids as well. Um, and that's a huge passion of mine is that um, going into the sports industry but using that as a method of achieving peace and helping communities grow, that's where I want to go. So I'm hoping next, uh, next summer uh, to go to New Zealand and experience their sports background as well. So. All right, so tell us about the special thing that happened to you last spring. Um, I've got something here. We just need to pull it out. Um, so this might give it away. Um, <laughs> my name is Connell Fagan, or more commonly known as Leprechaunal. Um, I have now become the 53rd Leprechaun of the University of Notre Dame. That's right. So tell us about this experience being the leprechaun of Notre Dame so far. Yeah, so um, it all started back in, um, back in February, actually, because um, I had made the practice squad for varsity soccer last year, was looking for a change. Um, so I went to all the basketball games last year. My onesie was always front row. Um, and then I spoke to the leprechaun, Joe. Um, and I really wanted to get <laughs> involved and invested more in Notre Dame because it's in my blood. Um, and that was absolutely incredible. And then the tryout process itself. Um, so we apply for it, you have to send in a creative video, 90 seconds, of why you think you're the best fit for the role. And then we have a five minute pep rally, so thankfully mine's was the Michigan game, so I was well prepared for that. <laughs> um, we also had a push-up challenge, we had a media portion, um, we also had a panel interview, and also a community sketch. So for my community sketch, we had to speak to fifth graders about the importance of doing well in school, 
and they give you a, a prop as well. So mine was a, an inflatable crayon, which was about two foot long. Um, but the difference was it wasn't actually fifth graders. It was people from other dorms who were trying to put you off. So you have to deal with that as well. <laughs> um, so yeah it's, yeah, it's pretty special. How does it feel to be the first Notre Dame leprechaun from Ireland? Um, yeah, so I get asked this question a lot. Um, but I feel, I feel so honored um, to be part of such a unique experience. Um, and the great thing about the Notre Dame Leprechaun is that we get to interact with people. A lot of other mascots, they're in very hot suits. I can vouch for that. When they come in at halftime, you see them sweating mm -hmm. it out. Um, but really getting to have close personal relationships with people. Um, like I met this family from New Mexico during the, the, the Michigan weekend, and I FaceTime them every week. Uh, and they had their um, one-year-old son with them as well. And I'll be able to see him grow. So maybe by the time I'm a 40-year-old, he could be the next Leprechaun. Um, but yeah, as I say, there's only 53 of us in history, um, and I know the fine Irish people always talk about it, but for me, the way I see it is that when the Irish first came to Ireland, just like the song that the Blue and Coal Company sang about Ireland, when uh, the Irish people came over originally, they weren't treated the nicest, um, and I think that's, that sort of echoes what Notre Dame stands for, that they took in the Irish people, they took in the Catholics, and they represented them and gave them a platform, and I think we've, the Irish have fought their way to the top just like Notre Dame, and hopefully we'll be in the playoff this year. So. All right. Connell, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.